55% of, of our property taxes are paid by homeowners. But out of that 55%, only 28% of the impervious surfaces in Duluth belong to the homes. So therefore, we're looking at some alternative ways. We're not thinking that a property tax is the best way to go because homeowners are not owning most of the impervious surfaces. What the council is considering is a utility fee. And we are working now with consultants to determine what our infrastructure need is and how much revenue we're going to need to actually have uh, up-to-date infrastructure. So this is a big project for us. The next project is the Western Gwinnett Bikeway. And in the natural environment, we also think it's important to provide ways for our citizens to stay healthy. So I'd like for you to listen now to Phil McLemore. The vision the for this project uh, was to try and encourage people to use alternatives to vehicles uh, in their shopping, working, uh, and playing uh, along this corridor. The, um, the use of the uh, bikeway, rather than driving your car, should help reduce the emissions that we have in the air and also our dependency on oil. The uh, second benefit of having the bikeway in is to help with um, the problem of obesity that is uh, growing in our society. And by providing an alternative to people to get more exercise, we hope that this will be positive for our citizens. The West Gwinnett Bikeway goes right into our next project, which is Rogers Bridge Park. This is probably one of my favorite projects that we're working on. During 2010, we were able to expand this riverfront park from 13 acres to 23 acres. It's the premier park. We're very proud of it. Our city parks and recs department is one of three in the county, and they are a great group of people. They manage over 100 acres of parkland and numerous, numerous programs for our citizens. What a great amenity to have a city park and rec program in your city. That's a real plus for us. We listened to the citizens about what they wanted in their parks, and the number one thing the citizens wanted was a dog park. So this spring, we are starting a dog park. It's down here in the corner, and you'll be seeing that take place very soon. We've just completed, completed phase one of our bikeway that goes down to the river. So this is a great park. I hope that you will visit this, and you're going to see a lot of great things happening here. The next project is just the project of connecting sidewalks. We are putting in quite a few sidewalks right now in Duluth. We're putting sidewalks on Davenport Road, Irvindale Road, and we're also adding sidewalks to West Larchville and McClure Bridge Road and Rogers Bridge Road. When it came time to talking about the sidewalks that would go on West Larchville Road, we had a lot of interest. We t tied the trees that would be affected when we started putting in the sidewalk and the citizens realized that we would be losing a lot of trees. Now let me help you visualize where this is. West Lawrenceville is the road that goes through the historic homes of Duluth. Can you imagine that road without the old trees? It would change the entire ambiance of that area. We want to protect that area. We want it to feel historic. So we worked with the citizens and we worked with a consultant and we are going to put in some alternative type sidewalks on West Lawrenceville. It'll be a combination of cement, pathways, and even some wooden structures. So this was a great problem that we solved with the help of citizens. Tad Leithhead, who is the chairman of the Atlanta Regional Commission, says that today one out of ten people are 65 years or older. Five years from now, ten years from now, one out of five people will be 65 years and older. <laughs> so the need for sidewalks and the need for connectivity is not going to go away and that's going to continue to be a focus for Duluth. The next environment is the technical environment. And if we're going to be a customer friendly city in this average age of 35, we have got to be using Web 2.0 tools. 
the flashy Facebook virtual town hall meetings and the webcast that we have done, they get attention. And we've had some news articles and even more on the television for that. But the real power of Web 2.0 2 tools come through social networking. How many of you tweet? I'm just curious. That's it. The city of Duluth tweets. We have these electronic arms that come out and they tweet. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Our public information office makes sure that we are out there with social media and social networking. The advantage of social networking is it brings every age to the table. It is a worldwide audience and it gives people that instant gratification. That's important right now. So social networking is a very important part of what we do. Another technical project that we put in place this year was our business department was really busy this year. They also offered citizens the opportunity to pay their property tax online, which is a very nice convenience that we were able to do this year. And the next project is our technology and using it with the police. Last year, I uncovered a tip for you that you really enjoyed. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. We're going to pause right now to recognize three heroes that we have in our room. And one of them was unable to come because his father passed away yesterday. That's Bobby Johnson. But I have Scott Parrish and Matt Baker. And I want you to wait just a second. Do you remember back right before the holidays, there was a house fire within the city limits of Duluth? And these guys were the first people to arrive. And before the fire trucks even got there, they were crawling in the windows and trying to save the family. And we really